good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this year's first episode of Atram's webinar series. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2021. I hope you all are healthy and well. Today, we have a special webinar with a very exciting guest. I'm DJ Desus, product manager here at Atram. Before anything else, I would like to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and that copies will be disseminated within the day, as well as posted on all our social media platforms. The replay will be readily available on our YouTube channel, Atram Studio. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell button to be notified on our new videos. We have a Q&A portion at the tail end of this webinar. We would love to get your questions. You may ask them by clicking on the Q&A button below your screens. Each question you send is a raffle entry to one of three Atram merchandise. Winners will be announced at the tail end of this webinar, so make sure to stay until the end. Finally, we will be wrapping up the webinar with a quick feedback survey as we would like to hear from you on how we could improve our webinar series. Marielle Betanga has been in the financial planning and insurance industry for the past six years. She created Simply Finance, to empower Filipinos by creating simple but actionable solutions to their unique goals and aspirations. Nice to have you in the webinar, Marielle. Great to have more Hi. financial planners. Hey! <laughs> Hi, DJ. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you, Atram, of course, for inviting me this morning. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited. And I hope that, you know, um, thank you also for everyone who joined us this morning. And I hope that everyone just learn a thing or two that you could already apply to have you know to help you have a head start on your finances this 2021. Marielle I did some homework and read that you started your finance journey through a family friend could you tell us more about it? Yes so I was in my early 20s and I was feeling really lost with my finances because um, no one man in my family taught me how to save or invest and I just felt that um, if I continued what I was doing back then um, I knew that I wouldn't be financially secure so that's where my curiosity started which led me to our family friend a financial planner um, and then it all started from there <laughs> and I guess you really love the finance industry now <laughs> Yes, I'm very passionate about it because of personal reasons. And for me, I just really want to help at least one client at a time, just have a better money mindset and, you know, be more secure with their finances. At the end of the day, it's really peace of mind for me. Great. All right, Marielle, you have the floor. You may now share your screen. Okay. Again, everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. So today we will just discuss some very basic and simple concepts to help you get started on your finances this 2021. So it's always important for me as a financial planner to make sure that my clients are, you know, um, have their foundations and their pillars in place before they get into more investments or they, before they delve in, before they delve deep into their finances and I think especially now since it's January it's a new year it's a great time to do this and to really sit down with yourself and really see where you are financially and see how you could improve moving forward and I also think that right now since we are going we are still going through a pandemic guys and parang 2020 has proven that anything Anything can happen talaga, no matter what. No matter how crazy it sounds, it can happen. So why not we make sure that no matter what happens, you know, in our external world, at least with our finances, we're secure, we're at peace, and kung ano man yung mangyari, at least ano tayo, parang prepared. And I think that's really the aim, um, di ba? And I think, um, especially now, coming into a new year, mas maganda na we're more prepared. So whatever 2021 um, throws at us, um, we're at a better place and we're ready. Okay, so again, I'm Marielle. I'm a registered financial planner with RFP Philippines. Um, DJ already um, did uh, uh, an introduction, so I won't um, add any more. I'm just really very passionate about this because of personal experiences, and I just really want to help one client at a time. Um, I'm not here to change the world, you know, I just want to um, be able to help. <laughs> um, 
so I built Simply Finance. So um, you can check us out at, at Simply Finance PH on Instagram or simplyfinanceph.com. So um, our aim really is just to provide financial literacy, inspiration, and motivation and help um, our viewers, our followers, our clients to just simplify the process because handling your money shouldn't be a complicated thing. Because the more complicated it is, um, the chances are hindi mo siya follow through. So as simple as possible and you're consistent and you're gonna be um you're gonna be good. Okay, sige, enough about me. Um let's go. So step one, audit your financial life. Before anything else, before you get into new investments or before you you try to change something, let's make sure that first alam mo na muna what's happening um with your finances now, diba? So I urge you guys, maybe tonight or this weekend, since it's Thursday already, um, you know, have a sit like sit down with yourself, have like a piece of paper, a pen, your computer or your phone, wherever um your bank account or investment accounts are connected and really just sit down and see where you are financially because the moment you're aware of where you really are that's when you can start making changes that's when you can start um taking down you know the right action steps to take so that you could go to your next level okay so auditing your financial life first of all figure out your net worth so let's find out first ano ba yung net worth mo diba so sometimes diba hindi naman natin to ginagawa on a regular basis so why don't we do it now january so um sit down with yourself and compute your total assets so basically everything you own that has a monetary value so pwedeng cash your cash in the bank even your cash in your wallet right now um the investment like your investments now if you have investments yung value niya so uh more often than not uh meron kang mga online account maybe that nandun na yung um current market value of your investments now um even like your car magkano ba siya if ibebenta mo siya today um your jewelry even personal items and receivables part in lahat ng assets mo so list it down and then um also um put yung value and then after that compute naman your liabilities so list down if you have any liabilities all your debt all your loans from banks your credit card um even if may utang ka kunyari sa family mo sa kaibigan mo ilagay mo rin lahat ng um debt mo after that once you have the number of your liabilities and assets um subtract your liabilities from your assets and then that gives you your net worth so at least now you know where you stand and if you want to increase your net worth or um, have a goal of like how much you want to uh, be worth in the next year or five years, at least now you know where you're starting from. Okay, after that, um, figure out your cash flow. So ito naman yung how your money moves on a monthly basis. So for my clients, ito yung pinakamahirap for them to list down yung expenses talaga. Kasi minsan hindi naman natin alam sa napupunta talaga yung mga little expenses. So first, um, ito, easier, your monthly income. So list down your net salary. Um, and if you are self-employed or you're not um, regularly employed, if it varies per month, you could just average it out. Um, average out what you get monthly and then also list down yung mga side hustles nyo so especially now um during the pandemic natutuwa ko na ang dami talagang may side or online business ngayon mga food sellers so natutuwa ko na parang everyone is really um parang making you know making ways for them to earn more so natutuwa ko so list down your side hustles as well and all other income that you may have and then after that ito na yung hard part for most of my clients total expenses so list down naman all your expenses like your needs yung talagang necessities mo at home um rent food uh communication load um ano pa ba? internet lahat yan part of the needs and then um, after that list down also your wants lahat ng mga binibili nyo lang kung mahili kayo mag online shopping uh, mga beauty mga gasto sa pets lahat yan everything basically that you spend for list down um and see also of course how much you spend per line item after that um subtract your expenses from your income which gives you your surplus so yung surplus maganda congratulations if um marami pang natitira so that's good you should celebrate that because at least you have more um room to save or invest or spend on other things but if zero yan or negative, medyo mag-isip ka na. Um, kasi 
<clears throat> it could mean that maybe you are spending more than you earn and that you are living beyond your means or it could also mean na maybe if lahat naman ng ginagastosan mo are necessities na hindi mo naman makat down, maybe it's time to think of, you know, increasing your income, maybe finding um, other ways to earn to supplement your current um, income. Okay. Now you know na your net worth, you know na how your money moves on a monthly basis. So at least medyo aware ka na, no? Now, since it's 2021, it's January, let's set very clear top. I put top financial goals kasi minsan ang dami naman natin financial goals. So as much as possible, let's trim it down to lang yung mga sa priorities nyo so that you're more focused and that hindi ka ma-overwhelm. So, um, Itemize it like your one-year goals, your five-year goals, your 10-plus year goals. So um, have very clear metrics. What I mean by this is be very clear with it. But at least alam mo how to gauge yourself um, when you're measuring the success, like your success or your progress. So for example, um, a not-so-clear goal is I want to save more money. But what does that mean, de ba? Parang pwede bang... Two pesos a day, syempre, parang iba -iba yun per person. So a clear, a clear version of that, for example, is within one year I want to save fifty thousand pesos, or I want to save ten thousand pesos. At least, um, may goal ka and may time frame ka and may may metric siya. So you know, um, where you stand, um, and you know na parang kunyari, middle na na year, medyo malayo ka pa sa goal mo, medyo isipin mo na like um, babaan ko ba yung goal or ibahin ko ba yung strategy ko, mga ganon. Um, kunyari, 10 plus year goals, you wanna prepare for your retirement. Um, Siyempre, iba-iba rin where we're coming from. Um, iba-iba rin yung ideal lifestyle natin when you retire. So, um, a clear version of that is really know how much you need um, for your retirement. Yung amount talaga. So you could ask a financial planner or um, your um, relationship manager to help you compete for that. So yon. So set very clear goals. Okay, now that you have your goals, that you know where you are financially, now set a budget na. So at least when you have a budget, um, at least you know na um, where your money is going, and at least you know na para okay. Since I set my goals. Um, I set my goals, now I can budget and plan around it. And, um, you know, it's just good to keep you on track talaga. And it helps you from overspending. And ito talaga yung pinaka-important na napapansin ko lately. It's to really prepare you for emergencies and life's uncertainties. And really, it always goes back to the feeling of security. That you know where your money is going. And that you know that at the end of the day, if anything happens, may mga... Um, Natabika for yourself, and there's no better feeling than that, talaga. Um, here, pay yourself first. Um, the usual habit, kasi no, is when we receive our salary or our income, we tend to spend first for everything we need to spend for, and um, um, also our wants. And then, kung may natira monthly, yun yung sinisave or ini invest. So I urge you guys, if you don't do it yet, why don't we switch it around a little bit and make sure that when we receive our income or our salary, um, magtabi na muna tayo for our savings and investments. And then after that, pag natabi nyo na then you can spend for all your necessities and wants. So at least you don't feel guilty and at least you know that um, inuna mo muna sarili mo. And it really helps with the mindset also. Na parang inuna mo sarili mo, you're putting yourself first. And that, parang for me, uh, personally, it's easier to, to do and it's easier to follow through. So every month, talaga, that's what I do. Um, talagang automatic. I have it in my notes na parang how much for this investment, how much for my savings. And then after that, you know, pwede na mag-spend for the other things. Kasi syempre, mahilig din naman ako mag-spend on mga random things. I'm still a regular, um, you know, yuppie na gusto pa rin mga mag-online shopping pa minsan-minsan. Okay. Now, okay, so I'll share with you like two budgeting, very popular budgeting techniques that you could try. At the end of the day, always do, you know, always just... Um, do what works for you. It, it's never a one-size-fits-all. And um, you could adjust also the allocations according to your needs. But I'll just share this with you so maybe you could have an idea. So 50-30-20 rule, I'm sure many of you have heard of this already. So 50% goes to needs. So again, all your necessities, anything that you really need to survive and live day-to-day. 
30% once. So, very generous pa nga sa once. So, ito yung mga, basically, anything you just want to spend for that, you know, you enjoy. And 20% savings and investment. So, but I always tell my clients, especially the ones na um, hindi naman breadwinner or wala naman masyadong gastusin sa bahay, um, especially habang mas bata, to really, really ramp up savings and investments. Because this will really give you a head start. Eh. Um, na parang when you reach your older years, at least mas ready ka na. And na, pag naumpisan mo na earlier, um, you have less to think about when you're older. Yun. And another one which is more detailed is T. Harv Eker's Jars Method. So he is the author of The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And I really urge you to read that book if, if you want to add a new book to read during this um, this year. So I know parami dyan na parang they want to read more books, yung mga resolutions. So yeah. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Okay, so for him naman, six jars. So 55% um, goes to living expenses. So necessities again. 10% financial freedom. So ito yung talagang parang investment account. You know, every month, no fail, you you um, set aside for your financial freedom. And this is like for your future, future self already. Maybe your retirement. And as much as possible, if you need to touch your money. This is the last jar you'll touch if you need it for any type of emergency or anything. Okay, 10% long-term savings. So these are the savings na parang would take maybe a little bit of time to build before you can spend. So for example, you're saving up for a new laptop or a new cell phone or maybe you're saving up for like a wedding or something like that. So every month, um, you put 10% and then pag nabuo mo na yung amount that you want, then you withdraw, then you spend it on the thing you've been saving up for and then you start again on the next long-term savings goal. Next is 10% education. So for him, it's not like academic na parang school or further studies or masters. For him, it's really personal education. So um, books, workshops, mentors maybe, um, ano pa bang, um, seminars, so all of that. So could be part of education because for T. Harv, you know, for him, um, his thinking is, how will we accept more money or more opportunities or more abundance into our lives if we don't, parang if we don't stretch our minds? Eh? Kasi parang, um, if all of these come, all these blessings come, and you don't stretch your mind, you won't be able to handle it. I guess the 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 example I always use is yung mga nananalo ng loto. You know when we hear those stories na nanalo ng millions. But after just a few months or a year, obus lahat. It's because they received such a huge amount um, at a quick time, and they weren't mentally prepared to handle it. So hindi nila mahandle. So hindi nila nakip. So for us, if we want to, you know, earn more and invest more and stuff like that, let's let's really stretch our mind. So it's really good that you're part of this webinar today. It means that you're very curious, and I urge you to really take advantage of all the free webinars out there um, to really, you know, to really stretch your mind also and make you more equipped. Um, 10% is play. So, ito yung masaya. Again, anything that you just want to spend on. Once more lang to. And 5% is give. So, ito yung tithing or charity. So, or maybe if someone just needs help. Yung mga minsan sa Facebook, may mga friends na kailangan magpatulong, mga GoFundMe for mga help ng mga family nila. So, that could be part of give. Because for T. Harv, um, how, um, for him, it's we have to be good stewards of our money and a part of that is really sharing our money. Um, yeah, so uh, again, you can adjust, you know, the allocation. So let's say you want to lessen education and then increase your play or increase your financial freedom. That's totally up to you. But as much as possible, um, wag mong lalagpasan ng 55% your living expenses because it might mean that you're, again, living beyond your means. Okay. Now that you have your budget and everything, you, next is identify money habits you need to adapt or change in order to reach your goals. So now that you have your goals and that you know where you stand financially, may mga nakikita ka na ba na, wait, maybe I should cut down a little bit on my online spending or maybe I should cook more at home or maybe I should start, you know, learning more about personal finance or maybe I want to learn more about about investing. So, you know, identify money habits you want to adapt or change, especially this 2021, so that it could help you reach your goals faster. Okay, step two, 
is to solidify your foundation. Okay, so what does that mean? So your foundation is really, ito yung base mo eh, so that if you go further into investing and other things in the future, at least if anything happens to you, at least you have your foundations. Ito yung safety net mo. Okay, our parents or our family, ni natin, ni natin sila safety net. Dapat you make your own safety net for yourself also. Para kung ano mang mangyari, you have yourself covered. And hindi tayo makakabother ng ibang tao. And at least, um, you're, again, it always goes back to peace and security. Okay. So a part of that is to increase your cash flow. So yun, um, as much as possible, if you have the time and bandwidth, you know, to have multiple streams of income. So active income, ito yung talagang what we work for. Um, so at work or our, 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 our online business, yan, mga active income yan. And then passive income or all the income that we don't really um, work for actively, but we receive, um, we receive money every um, every so often and then maximize this while you're able and working so for me ever since i graduated college back then i never had just one stream of income i don't know nasanay lang ako and at the same time um it also gives you more ammo to save and invest and also live the life that you want so um if you have and if you can if you have the time you know i urge you to also try to increase your cash flow um if kaya pa if even naman super duper busy so work okay next is handling debt so if you have debt right now yung mga parang not good debt um try to create a debt repayment plan especially mga credit cards and everything kasi yung iba talaga talagang na na nalululun eh, na parang lalong nalulunod every month eh, puro minimum lang so try to create a plan na talagang masistick mo and you can really follow kasi while you have debt, it's hard. Eh. Parang there's also like a psychological thing that it, it it pulls you it pulls you down and it 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 parang it hinders you from moving forward your with your financial goals. So as much as possible, try to handle your debt, even if it's just with family. I tell my clients, kaya hindi ka naman pinapabayad ng tito mo, tita mo, ng kaibigan mo. As much as possible, bayaran mo na kasi para tapos na, para wala nang masabi and at least clean slate ka. Um, if you really have no control over your spending, make spending hard to do. Like, even mo talaga yung card mo sa bahay or itago mo, ilock mo, I don't know. Um, delete mo yung mga apps. Um, wag kang magpa, wag, unfollow mo na yung mga shops na pinafollow mo sa Instagram or Facebook. Yung mga ganyan. Like, make it hard para at least hindi ka matempt. Um, and then, of course, have an emergency fund. So especially now, no, um, especially in 2020, naging big topic to kasi um, a lot of people lost their jobs last year. A lot got um, salary deductions, like for example. So an emergency fund could help you with that. So at least if my emergency fund ka, um, the ideal usual benchmark is three, at least three to six months of your expenses. At least, if you don't have a job, bigla, you have three to six months worth of expenses that you can give to yourself at least. So you have a buffer to really think of your next move or find your next job or something like that. Some experts have been saying, some mga other webinars I've been attending also, that nine months also, if kaya is good. Because right now, we're going through a really weird time. Again, anything can happen. Um, ideally, you put this in a savings account na madali lang ma-withdraw just in case kailangan mo siya. Um, this is not for health emergencies. As much as possible, you should have a separate um, health you know, backup plan also. Okay. Ayan, speaking of yan, mga health, also very important and helpful, you know, if you're self-employed, especially uh, if you're employed, um, very lucky na parang automatic na yan, SSS, pag-ibig, fill health, um, as much as possible, nakakatulong din naman yan kahit pa paano. Um, HMO, again, uh, if, you, if you're given an HMO by your company, I urge you to really um, maximize that, sayang. Uh, critical illness also. So if you have a financial advisor, um, ask them if they have critical illness plans. Kasi maganda rin itong mga critical illness dahil ito yung mga para sa cancer, mga grave illness, sometimes HMO doesn't cover anymore. Kasi usually... Ito yung talagang nagde-drain sa savings and investment of a family if anyone gets a, like a critical illness. So better to have yourself ready. So at least if that happens to you, knock on wood, um, meron kang first line of defense before you touch your savings and investments. And adequate life insurance. So I say adequate because... um. 
you know, some people say, ah, I have life insurance na, but let's say, kunyari, insured ka, for example, for 200,000 pesos, and you have three children. What if may mangyari sa'yo tomorrow, and you leave your wife and your three children, how far will that 200,000 go, di ba? I don't think that far. Mga months lang yan. So, make sure enough yung insurance mo. So, things to consider are immediate needs. Um, hospital and funeral expenses are usually there when someone dies. Any outstanding debt, replacement income, for example, you give your family 10,000 a month. So, pag mawala ka, hindi naman mawawala yung needs ng family mo. So, it, your insurance has to cover that 10,000 pesos a month for your family. Um, all your liquid assets or cash and existing life insurance. Again, you can just approach uh, any licensed insurance advisor to help you out on this, to help you compute how much insurance you need. Okay. Now that you have your foundations, um, now that you have your foundations, pwede ka na mag-invest. So ito usually yung mga talagang gusto talaga ng mga tao. Ito yung gusto nilang unahin. But I urge you guys, unahin yung muna yung foundations nyo before you invest. I know hindi siya sexy, hindi siya exciting, unahin yun. But it will really save you a lot of worry and stress. Kasi if anything happens and wala kang foundations, una mong touch is yung mga investments mo, which ayaw mo naman, diba? So let's make sure but you set your foundations first and then mag-invest sa tayo. Ayun. So, tamang tama, we are with Atram this morning. So, follow a budget and investment plan. So, yun. So, part of your budget also is, you know, your allocations for your investment. So, if you are a newbie investor, um, you know, there are so many investments out there. Um, ang dami-dami. Just go online. There are so many options. And um, there are so many... Um, there are so many new ones popping up now. But if you are a newbie investor, um, you may look into pooled funds first. So ako talaga personally, this is where I started. And actually, an Atram fund was one of the first investments I had way back. So pooled funds could mean mutual funds, UITF, MPF, uh, VUL, yung mga pera ngayon. So they're all pooled funds and they all kind of work the same way. So um, handled by professional fund manager siya by tooling. So kaya pooled funds, they pool our money and then sila na yung namimili where to invest it and they handle it. And it really um, takes a load off our back because, you know, they do everything for us and uh, we just invest and then sila na bakala. So this is really one of the easiest ways to invest and personally for me, I still invest in pooled funds every month. It's really part of my investment allocations and it's really easy um, and it's very good. So at least once you start with this and you got and you get the the hang of it then you can you know delve deeper into the investment world and if you want to do more things hands on then you can really study it but um i really suggest this for newbies okay so luckily we have seedbox philippines so seedbox is the first fully digital marketplace for investments um and financial products in the philippines so this is actually a joint venture of of course atram which is definitely one of the top asset management companies in the philippines and in the group um, a leading it and software company in indonesia so right now um atram has 11 funds in their seed box and the good thing about it is the minimum investment is only 1000 pesos so that's really really good for me naman um as long as every month you put money and it becomes a habit that's good na it's, it's starting somewhere and at least you're making steps towards your goals and when you increase your income or when you increase your surplus then you can allocate more but you know the important thing is consistency hindi yung tipong once ka lang naglagay ng 1000 and then Yun na yun. No, guys, let's try to be very consistent about it and do it talaga as often as possible to really maximize. Um, so you can just easily go to seedbox.ph. Super easy. Just sign up and then, yeah, know your goals. Again, it goes back to, you know, knowing your goals. Um, use the goal planner, invest, and then again, build the habit. So it's very, very easy. And if you'd like to know more, you can just go to their website or um, talk to a relation, at Atram relationship officer to, to guide you through the process. Um, so yeah, here are some of their funds. So very good because they have for mga moderate investors, for aggressive, conservative. So it makes it easy and bite-sized. Um, and you know, parang, okay, since bata pa ako, maybe I can be aggressive or sige, medyo tumatanda na ako, maybe moderate na ako ngayon. So things like that, um, very easy to do. And yeah, I just want to show you something that, you know, um, 
if we keep procrastinating, kasi especially now, 20, you know, January, and huwag yun na i-procrastinate. Sana by December, alam mo yun, para you can congratulate yourself that you've put this amount um, and that you've invested. Because for example, this is just, you know, um, an illustration just to show, um, like for example, si Anna invested 25,000 a year for 10 years um, and then she just let her money grow. And then she only put 250,000 in total, but kunyari, it grew in like 10% annually. At age 60, um, 4.7 million na. As opposed to Karen that wasted 10 years of not saving and investing. And then she started 10 years later at age 35. So tuloy-tuloy nga siya naglagay 25,000 a year. Her total input was 650. But because she lost the 10 years of growth, um, at age 60, it only yielded her 2.7. So it's just really here to illustrate that, you know, small steps really make a big difference. And time talaga, talagang time is your biggest asset here also. So just take advantage of that. Um, yeah, just really take advantage of that. And yeah, I I urge you guys that, you know, this is just a starting point and for you to really just take consistent action and really maximize, you know, especially now everything's online, to really maximize what's available. I think next week, Atram has another um, webinar, which is more like uh, about investment outlook. Yata. So if you're interested, you can look into that. But really, just take consistent action and keep learning. And, you know, it gets exciting after a while, I promise. So yeah, I'll leave you with a quote. You are free to choose, but the choices you make today will determine what you will be do and have in the tomorrows of your life. And I really wish you guys a good, good year ahead. And I hope that by December 2021, when you sit down with yourself again, making your goals for 2022, um, I hope that may mga natik kayo and there's, there has been a lot of progress throughout the year. So I would, so I, um, yeah, good luck everyone. And yeah, that's it. If you wanna learn, wanna know more about Simply Finance, you can just go to our um, pages or scan this QR code. So yeah, um, I'll let's go back to DJ. Maka there are questions. Thanks, Marielle, for giving very actionable steps towards uh, our finances. Okay, yung jar's method, ah. Baka you can share your personal jar method. Oh, okay. My jar method, actually, before I actually for my financial freedom, I. I put more than 10% definitely. Ilang percent? Mga 30 or 40% goes to my financial freedom monthly. And then everything else for me varies. Yung pinaka-important for me are my, is my financial freedom. And thank you also for the plug for Seedbox and Atrum Funds. Remember, you can invest in Atrum Funds for as low as 1,000 pesos. And uh, Marielle, just curious, uh, you mentioned that one of your first investments was an Atrum Fund. Uh, what fund was that the the best of the really aggressive one i forgot the name <laughs> what was it all right forgot i forgot it's all right that's all right anyway to our audience please keep the questions coming remember questions you send in can help you win atra merch our atra merch is eco-friendly as here at atram we support the united nations sustainable development goals so shall we look at some questions marielle are you ready for them Okay, I hope they're not hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with pandemic ngayon. Eh. So, should you pay off debts or save or invest at this time? Okay, so, um, yeah, I get this question. So, at the same time, maybe you can have an allocation na, kunyari, you have an extra... Um, 5,000 pesos monthly. So maybe a portion of that can go towards your debt. At the same time, a portion of that can go into your savings as well. So at least you're tending to both. Because yun na nga, if the, the, the fear there is if you're only paying off your debt and wala kang emergency fund or savings, if big lang may emergency na bago, you're gonna get into deeper debt. So at least if you have extra, yung surplus mo, try to allocate for both at the same time para at least both are moving. Okay. All right. Can you give advice or tips on those who want to move out of their homes, uh, but their income is not stable? For me, ha, guys, um, on like personal experience lang, I've been living alone for, I 
think more than six years na actually. Parang same with my career. Kaya rin I was super into the financial planning, whatever. Kasi nga, I moved out and I, you know. My honest advice, as an ate na lang, yuck, as an ate. <laughs> if you don't have to move out, I urge you to not uh, move out if you don't have to. But if if it's really, you can't live at home for your own reasons and, you know, for your own sanity, you have to move out or just for logistical reasons. Um then I urge you to really look at your budget and if it's really not enough for you to move out, to really increase your cash flow. That's why I said um, I've always had multiple streams just because it, I had to supplement my my living alone. And of course, I wanted to live in dignity naman. So kaya yon. it's really the hard truth. But if you want to move out and it's really the only choice you have and hindi enough your earnings, then you have to make way to earn more. That's really the answer to that talaga. Coming from someone who's been living alone for years. Wow. Ah, that's very inspiring. Any, uh, do you have pointers on the best way to set aside budget for emergencies? Um, pointers to set aside budget for emergencies. Um, so yeah, just every month, um, you know, start with like your surplus amount talaga, what you have left, and then see what you can cut down on your expenses. Kung wala naman talaga na makakut down because everything's a necessity, then let's stick to your surplus a surplus number. Um, and then, you know, if you don't want to invest yet and you want to just save muna for your emergency fund, which I urge, put all your surplus into your emergency fund. And then, you know, once you've built that, then you can move on to your other goals already. But yeah, your surplus talaga is your magic number. So if wala kang surplus or negative yan, then it's really, really, really time to think of how you could make sure that you have a surplus every month. One of the viewers is asking, um, they have an upcoming end term uh, or maturity payout on their previous investment. So do they reinvest that or do they leave it in the time deposits or savings account once it comes in? What's your advice on that? Okay, so I guess it always depends on what your goals are and where where you wanna like what you wanna do with that money, right? So if you're happy naman with the growth of where it has been, uh, maybe you can keep it there. If you're happy naman with the service and you're happy with how it grew, but if you're not happy with how it grew and that um you think you could do better, then maybe it's time to you know use that um cash or payout from that um, maturity and maybe you may explore other investments maybe call Atram and maybe see if their funds perform better than your previous fund. Great. And thanks for the plug again. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you give examples of passive income with little management? I know that a lot of people, you know, have busy lives and sometimes it's hard to manage your finances. So I guess this person is looking for, you know, ways to be able to find passive income without, you know, little to no management. Um, at least five though. At least five passive income. Okay. So for example, like I... What's funny with passive income is that a lot of people want passive income on that. But then sometimes it takes a lot of capital to make sure that your passive income um, already supplements your um, your your earnings. So like I, I, I watched this video of Marvin Germo where he said like if you want your stocks or your dividends to 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 be um to work as a passive income like say you want like six digits you have to have at least like millions already so yun yung tricky with passive income you have to have a lot but then okay so yeah mga dividends um it could also be let's say you have a rental property that you're renting out that you could rent out or yung mga iba ngayon um they do like they mga they make ebooks yung mga online is more in the state a lot of people make ebooks and then they just sell online and that's passive income or it could be you have like an affiliate program with like like a website or something that when they click your link, you could earn from that. Um, I also like referrals. So I have like more referrals with other um, with other people that I believe in. For example, this girl, um, Nomad Finance Girl. So parang every month I get income from her because I refer to her as well. So those are some, some ways that you could earn passively. But then again, hindi, 
many times as I said, hindi rin siya substantial minsan to, well, for, for me, hindi siya substantial palagi unless malaki na yung capital mo. So, yeah, there are many ways also, especially in the States, madami, very big sa States sa mga YouTube vloggers, yung how to create passive income through dropshipping, yun, madami, madami talaga. Pero it takes a lot of work. Hindi rin siya ganun kadali, especially to set up yung mga ganun. It's nice that you are able to say na it's not that easy as well for those. No? Yeah. Um, there's another question here. Where do we put the money to build for an emergency fund in the 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule that you mentioned? Um, it could be ano, the savings and investment. So 20%. But then again, um, as I always say, if wala ka naman masyadong needs and wants as much as possible. Um, and if hindi ka naman breadwinner, as much as possible, you increase the 20%. Maganda lang yung 50, 30, 20 for the mga newbie talaga na medyo marami pang gastusin talaga na wants kasi parang uh, ang hirap makurb nung um, discipline. But for those na medyo mas discipline na, you can, you can go higher, definitely. You have to adjust talaga on your, you know, quality of life at the moment. Like your, where uh, you are uh, in the stage of life, the ba? Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a next question. Is there any ideal number for savings account, trust account, stock trading accounts uh, for any individual who wishes to achieve financial freedom though? Um, again, it really depends um, per person. So it's good like if you talk to like a, a, a wealth officer, a financial officer, um, because it will vary per person. It could like for like 1 million to you could mean one, could mean something else to another person. 100,000 earnings for this person could mean, you know, not a, differently to another person. So it's good um, to really just sit down with someone or really, or for you to just really identify what you want, how much you want. Because I can't give a number right now because it's really not, it's really not a one size fits all. Some people parang they want, okay, I, I want 5 million in my bank account. Then I ask them why. Gusto ko lang. Alam mo yun, parang it really varies per person. There's no one answer. You decide for yourself. And then if you feel that the numbers are off, then maybe that's a time you you talk to your investment banker or your bank or a financial planner to, to help you see, okay, medyo imbalance siya or something. But yeah, decide for yourself what that means to you. There's a question from a young professional in the audience, uh, not a breadwinner though. And uh, that person thinks that uh, he or she is earning enough naman. However, uh, really struggling tracking finances due to the time restrictions and really hates doing the tracking. So the good thing about it is that uh, this person always deducts uh, savings from cash flow before expenses. And at the moment, um, uh, the person is putting 50% of the money from salary and side hustles to savings, then the other 50% to expenses. So personal freedom funds included. Uh, the question is, is it really necessary for uh, the person to track the expenses to achieve financial stability? Okay. So yeah, congratulations. No, you're putting 50% salary inside that. Okay. So yeah, that's good. 50% already goes to your savings and everything. So um, for those naman that medyo nasanay na yung system, kasi yung budgeting naman, it's really for you to parang masanay, para siyang diet, and may once masanay ka, then it's easier after a while. So, personally for me, I don't not track everything on a daily basis. There would be times na pati tip ko sa grab driver um, nilalagay ko, which, which can get a little bit overwhelming, right? So, for me, the most important for me, ah, again, it's different per person. What's the most important for me is alam ko yung um, every month na tinatabi ko for my savings and investments. And then after that, the needs and wants, medyo, medyo na humahalo na siya depending on my month. But um, what's important is I know that I'm paying myself first. And then after that, everything is like, it's free for you. So, yun. So, it's not necessary naman na every single expense you track but it's good when you're starting so that you just have an overview of where you're at and how you could improve and then once you know sanay ka na, then you can just be more lax about it 
we have a lot of viewers here that are asking, how do you maintain uh, consistency with budgeting and investing? How do you continue tracking your finances and making sure that you record all your expenses or you, you, you have, you're on top of every, you know, your financial life? Okay, so yun na nga, just have an allocation monthly na para, okay, let's say may 5,000 ka monthly. So yung 2,500 pang bayad ko ng, let's say, VUL insurance ko, and then yung 1,000 I'll put into my mutual fund, and then maybe the other one you put in your savings. So at least you have that na. Um, just have that allocation. And then when you increase your income through the years, hopefully, diba, as we progress to our career ladder, we earn more. So yun, you can adjust now when you earn more or or when other things arise, for example, bigla kang uh, magkakaanak or ikakasal, so maybe more expenses. So as much as possible, if talagang too much yung every day, kasi it is too much, I agree. Um, you could do like a quarterly audit with yourself, a yearly, but definitely you should sit down with yourself at least once a year to really see how you've been doing. Great. That's good advice. Um what if a person is nearing retirement naman? So, towards the end of the spectrum, uh, what kind of investment portfolio can you recommend though? Sorry, which one is that? I'm reading our Viber ones. Uh, okay, if, if you're a person nearing retirement. retirement age, um, I would suggest yung yan, like with the Atram Receipt Box, the conservative ones na lang, just because... Um, you don't want it to fluctuate too much anymore because you're nearing retirement already. Okay. Uh, so if your secondary income is through passive income, so like interest from bonds, but uh, his foundation isn't complete yet in terms of uh, no insurance plans, what should the person prioritize? Also, what, person, uh, what percent would you recommend that should be allocated for insurance plans? Okay, so again, it depends where you are. Like, are you a breadwinner? Are you a single professional? Um, do you have a family? So all of those things um, should be taken to, uh, into an account. And then after that, um, if you sit down with a licensed financial advisor or insurance agent, then they can um, rightfully, what's the word? They can rightfully, um, what's the word? <laughs> They can rightfully recommend um, how much you should put, you should have interest, because there are also other factors like your mga sa assets and everything, also like all your cash in the bank. Like kanina I put it there, like some things to consider, even like immediate expenses, like your mga sa hospital and funeral expenses. So it really, really varies per person. It's really a personal matter. So um, yeah, it's good that you're looking into that. So it's good if you find a financial advisor that you can trust, so that they can help you. Um, see what the best insurance is for you at your life stage now. Okay. I, I'm so happy that we have so many questions from our audience. Somehow we couldn't even you know, go through all of them. But we do have one last question that we're able to you know, accommodate. And that's, what are your top book recommendations for personal finance? So like, if, you're, if you want to read more on personal finance, what books would you recommend? I recommend, you know, a while ago, like a Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I also recommend um, You Are a Badass. With, well, I'm a girl, so maganda siya. You Are a Badass with my... Wait, I, I posted it actually recently uh, by Jen Sincero. Um, and also, um, what's that by Tony Robbins? It's here. It's um, this book by Tony Robbins. It's called... Um, the giant something I forgot, but yeah, that's quite good. But it's really, really long as well. Um, what else is good? Also, rich dad, poor dad, the usual. And um, I also listen to a lot of podcasts. So I listen to um, I read Tony Robbins, Awake the Giant Within, and then I listen to a lot of like self de development podcasts as well, like uh, Mary Forleo. Um, um, even Oprah. Lately, I've been listening to this one that's really good. Wait, it's called the Mindset Mentor, and I'm more podcasts now. And Impact Theory is really good. So it's it's not just about finance, but also about your mindset and how you deal with career and business. And a lot of um, 
a lot of stuff about the pandemic now also to help us be more calm and like what we can do now. So it, it really helps. It's more holistic. Okay. All right. So, and that's all the time we have for questions, I believe. I, I'm looking at the chat right now, seeing if uh, we still have time for one more question. And it looks like we do. All right. So as a financial planner, do you still make impulsive purchases? And if so, how do you discipline yourself? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, you know, I'm still a woman. I'm in my 30s. I want to look good. So recently, I bought a package at a derma. Um, you know, when they sell you stuff. <laughs> so long gumanda. So yeah, I do. I still have. But it was my birthday month, I think. So I said, ito na yung birthday gift ko for myself. And um, it was still part naman of my play money. So okay lang. Okay lang naman. And minsan, if it touches your needs money na, then maybe mag ramen ka na lang or mag corn beef ka na lang the rest of the month. <laughs> you know, you have to find balance talaga. <laughs> Well, thank you for all the questions and thank you for your insightful answers, Marielle. We have uh, now the winners for our eco-friendly Atram merch. And the winners of our raffle are Jonalyn, Joven, and Glory Rose. We will contact you through the email uh, you provided in the registration for details on how you can receive the giveaway items. So. Thank you again, Marielle, for the insights, the tips, and your answers to the questions. And thanks as well to our audience for your questions. If you have any further questions or would like to learn more about Atrum's funds and strategies, please get in touch with your relevant Atrum Relationship Manager or visit our website, www.atrum.com.ph. In case you have not registered for our webinar next week, uh, it's the Market Update 2021 Investment Outlook. You may do so by scanning the QR code flashed on your screen. You may also type in the link uh, found on the left side of your screen. We also have webinars lined up for the rest of the month. So please check our social media pages if uh, any webinars do interest you. And we would like to invite you to join Atrum's new official Viber community group, hashtag AtramPH community, to stay updated on the latest announcements, advisories, and reminders. Scan the QR code or visit this link, http colon slash slash bit dot do slash atram ph. And that's all the time that we have for this webinar. Thank you, Maria. And of course, thank you to our thank audience. You. All right. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Uh, and if you have any friends uh, who you think would like this webinar, but are unable to attend, feel free to share the YouTube replay of this session. Visit our YouTube channel, Atrum Studio. Please like, share, subscribe, and click the bell button for more videos. Thank you, everyone.